This video I'm going to show how to wire the laser, CO2 laser and how to fix the wirings or how to reinstall the tube once you get the new one. Normally the CO2 laser comes with a power supply like this. It has a red wire which is positive and then we have the white or the black wire which is basically ground or negative. In case of the positive wire, uh, usually it comes with a connector. So if you get a new tube, it's better to replace a whole wire. Uh, usually it comes with a wire like this, basically another red wire with proper connector. If you're replacing the tube, just make sure you're getting right connector so that it goes in the socket properly. Sometimes it's inverse, so you can get like two parts of this thing and doesn't help. So make sure uh, they look the same and they can go in each other. You put them in, screw them in, that's the easy part. And the harder part is the other part of the wire. Usually you have two options in the tube. Tube that comes with a wire or tube that comes with a pin. If it's a pin, you just uh, strip it and put it on the pin and I insulate it. If it's a wire, you have to splice the wire. Uh, next section I'm just going to show how to splice the wire and how to make it safe so it doesn't uh, arc to the body of the laser. Connecting two wires together. So we have one wire coming from a power supply, one wire going to the tube. Before you begin to do anything, make sure your power supply is disconnected from the power. Like physically, no power. And if you just disconnected the power supply, it still has a charge in the combustors. So you need to wait at least half an hour uh, just in case for your safety. If you don't have time, technically you can shorten the, the wire to the body and there's going to be spark, it's going to discharge uh, capacitors, but it's not a good idea, also not safe if you don't know what you're doing, so just in case disconnect the power supply, disconnect power from the machine, wait half an hour or so to, to, to let the capacitors to discharge. And just in case, if it doesn't discharge, extra safety, simple glass might help. Not necessary too much of protection, but it's a good idea to wear uh, some sort of latex or at least a uh, leather glass for your safety, especially if you don't know what you're doing, if you do it for the first time. So I'll wear the glass just for the videos. One wire, buy another wire, we need to strip it. I found strippers like this. Not a good option, but that's what I have. If you have regular wire strip, it's gonna help because it's more, more like a coaxial wire in here. You probably cannot see it, but uh, it's a different type of electrical wire, so it's a little harder to, to strip. Uh, in my case, since I don't have right wire strip, I'm gonna use a scissor. I'm gonna cut a little of the jacket, not too much, not to get to the wire. Once I have that. I'm going to use a wire stripper to pull out some sort of nylon or whatever the material I have. And I have my exposed wire. I'm going to twist it, make sure it's straight, sitting right, and I'm going to do the same thing for the other part of the wire. Not too much, again, not to cut the wire inside, just insulation. If it doesn't go through, that means we didn't cut through. So yeah, I cut the first jacket, which is mostly mechanical, and the thicker one, the white one, is more for preventing arc to come out. So I need to cut a little more. There you go. Should work now. And it did. This one probably better than cheap power supply wire. Why I'm doing now, we just bought separately in case we need to do an extension. So it looks like it's a little better insulation than one from the power supply. And finally, got it. I see the actual metal. I'm gonna twist it. Now I have two twisted parts. Normally, if I want to do the perfect job, I'm gonna solder it. But uh, if you don't have the soldering iron, we can twist it. Before you twist it, we need to prepare the insulation. So this is a tube normally used uh, in water chillers for the lasers. So all of you should have it. 
if you don't have separate uh, silicone tube, you can just uh, cut a little from the chiller and uh, make sure you don't have any water, dry it, and make it very nice and dry, and then, then you can use it. Uh, basically, point of this tube, it's about uh, 116 or 2 millimeter thick uh, silicone tube, and it has no cuts, so it's gonna work as an insulation. It's a critical part when you Splice in the wire for the high voltage because uh, the power supply like this has at least uh, 40,000 volts and it likes to arch uh, to any metal object. So if you're just gonna, if you're gonna do like this and put electrical tape over, looks nice, uh, works for your 110 volts. But once you get close to the metal, it's just gonna arc through the, the the electrical tape and electrical tape does nothing to to to, to that voltage. So you need to do much better insulation. Uh, so I cut this one from my chiller. Before I do anything, I'm gonna put my silicone over the wire because otherwise I'm gonna have to do the job again. Then simple twist. Next, put the wire next to each other. Twist them. And usually this thing I solder, but if you don't have a soldering iron, it's fine. You can just hide it so there is a minimum distance of the wire exposed so we don't want to have any possibility of the arc now for just in case precautions i'm going to start with electrical tape on this twist this doesn't really help much but mostly for the moisture to come in you don't want the moisture to come into the device, but it's not going to prevent uh, extra electrical charge from coming out. I'm going to try as neat as hermetic as possible to make watertight connection over both wires. Looks pretty neat, reasonable. You can also use a shrink uh, wrap, uh, shrink tubing if you have those. So I have this to prevent moisture. Now I'm sliding through my silicone tube. And good thing in silicone is semi transparent. So we see my splices here. I'm getting at least two inches, 50 millimeters from a side from a splice. That, that's sufficient enough to prevent arc. So if there is electrical charge, it has to go here and then get to the body of the machine on any grounding, which is a little harder than we have straight connection. So in most cases, it it's, uh, saves you from any arcing. Once I have the silicone tube in position, I'm gonna use another electrical tape on the side. And that's gonna give us another insulation from the water and moisture and extra protection from sparks. Okay, reasonable side and reasonable job on this side. And same thing on the other side. tape is overlapping. Okay, not the perfect one, but it's gonna keep tube in position. So we have insulated splice for high voltage wire. Now, if this goes next to the power supply or next to another object, it's not gonna arc and the laser machine gonna work fine. If you hear any clicking noise, uh, but most likely the power supply uh, is sparking to the body. And basically, any type of clicking or strange noise, is, it's a big chance that the wire is leaking uh, to the body. A uh, small puncture, puncture in, a, in a wire is going to have the problem with uh, electricity leaking. So that, that should help you with the installation of a new tube. 